welcome back to Too Cool for Middle School. I have a huge book haul to share with you today. I applied for a grant through Foothills Credit Union and I actually won $200 to spend on books for my classroom. So thank you so much. Shout out to Foothills Credit Union. $200 actually goes a pretty long way on Amazon. I wasn't sure, you know, how many books I'd really be able to get, but I got a lot. I teach sixth grade English and in the past I've always taught history. So I didn't have a ton of books in my classroom that were really like either age level appropriate or even like subject matter appropriate for my students just because they weren't that interesting to them. I had like a million copies of My Brother Sam is Dead. So now I have some really cool books and the only reason that they're so cool is because I asked you for suggestions um, back when I did my Scholastic Book Fair haul and you guys gave me some amazing, amazing suggestions. All you English teachers out there uh, told me some of your favorite books so they're probably going to show up in this haul. Let's just get started because this is going to be a really long video. So I've got a huge pile right here. Here's the first one. This is Augie and Me, Three Wonder Stories. I actually read this the other night, like all in one shot after the baby went to bed. It's a pretty easy read, but you have to have read Wonder first in order to understand it. So I got Wonder from the Scholastic Book Fair, and then I just wanted to add this as well. And it's so, so good. I love this. I love the whole Wonder deal. I think this was maybe the only one that wasn't a suggestion from uh, the other video, but this is Sasquatch in the Paint by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I have the first uh, book in this kind of like series by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. It's like a mix of basketball and mystery, and a lot of my kids like the other book, so I thought I would grab this one. It's been in my um, Amazon cart for a long time. Someone suggested this book to me. It's called Liddy by Katherine Patterson, and it sounds really good. It's about a girl that works um, in the textile mills um, in Lowell, Massachusetts. Massachusetts, and so this is like a historical fiction novel which I love and I always encourage my students to read and it's nice and short um, if some of my students are a little more intimidated by like those longer books so I think this will be a really good addition to my collection. This one also looked really good Inside Out and Back Again by Thanh Ha Lai I think. This is about a girl who has to flee Saigon during the Vietnam War so another kind of like historical fiction novel and it looks really really good and won a lot of awards. I think all my students have already read all the Percy Jackson books, but in case there are any that haven't, I got this one, um, Percy Jackson and the Olympians. My kids talk about these books all the time and I actually haven't read them, so you know, if nothing else, at least I can read it or some kids can go back and read it a second time. This one looks really interesting to me. It's called Star Girl. Get it? Star Girl by Jerry Spinelli. On the back this one says it's in a celebration of nonconformity and it's an emotional tale about the perils of popularity and the inspiration of first love. Sounded really good for my age students and it's another kind of thin one. Now, this one was for me as much as anybody else. I cannot believe I haven't read this book yet and everyone always tells me I would love it. This is The Book Thief and I'm going to be stealing this one and reading it <laughs> before anyone's allowed to borrow it. Uh, it's pretty long. This is another like historical fiction novel set in World War II and I can't wait to read it. This one I hadn't heard of. This is called Out of My Mind by Sharon M. Draper. And this one sounds really interesting. It's about an 11-year-old named Melody. She has a photographic memory and people think that she's not smart, but she is. This one had really good reviews. This is The Magician's Elephant. Um, I think a few people in the past have suggested this to me as well. On the description it says, Orphan Peter Augustus Duchenne has one question for the fortune teller. If his sister is still alive, how can he find her? The answer is unexpected. Follow the elephant. Unbelievable? Perhaps, but true. And that's all you get, but it sounds really good. So I also want to read this one. A few people also suggested this. This is All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven, I think it's pronounced. And this one's going to be a movie soon. So I kind of like buying books that um, are going to be made into movies. And in the past, I've done a lot of like little movie field trips just on Saturdays with students where I don't really like organize it through the school. It's just like show up if you want. This is the date and time that we're going to go. Um, and then I offer kids extra credit if they read the book and see the movie and um, just write up a little like one page comparison and so I thought this one would be a nice one to kind of start that off with too. And this one I've just kind of flipped through but it seems like it goes back and forth between the stories of a kid named uh, Finch and a girl named Violet so I'm excited to read this one. This is another one that I've heard about over and over again called The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Uh, the circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there when yesterday it was not. 
within the black and white striped canvas tents is an utterly unique experience full of breathtaking amazements. It just sounds really good. I mean, who doesn't want to read about the circus? Looks like I've got two circus books now. This is The Outsiders. I read it in middle school, but I haven't read it since then. And I know that a lot of like eighth grade teachers usually teach this book. And I know that it's special to a lot of kids. And so I thought I would just have this in there in case any of them want to pick it up if they haven't read it before. This one I'm so excited about. I can't remember who suggested this, but oh my goodness, I started reading it. The Mysterious Benedict Society. Um, I'm on like page 40 and it's so good. This kind of feels like the Harry Potter void for me. It kind of has that vibe. And so I'm going to finish the rest of this one. I think it's so interesting. Um, so far, it's just about this kid who's an orphan, you know, kind of like Harry Potter. And um, he takes this weird test that he passes and then he has to like go on to all these different steps. And he's like one of the only people that does pass it. And it's going to give him some kind of an opportunity, but he doesn't even know what it is yet. But it's kind of like... Harry Potter and Hogwarts so it sounds so cool and it's part of a series so I got the second one and the third one so the second one is the mysterious no the mysterious Benedict Society and the perilous journey and I just love like the cover <coughs> art and everything oh, that's Jensen playing over there um, this one just it looks so cool so I mean even just judging a book by its cover this sounds cool and then this is the third one the mysterious Benedict Society and the prisoners dilemma and I've heard nothing but good things about these. So I usually like to have a couple of like series in my library as well. So that kids, there's some kids, you know, they just read things super fast and they just want to keep the story going. And so even though the first one is really long, I have a few students who I think will just like devour these books. This one's called Romeo and Julio, which just intrigued me from the beginning. It's again by Sharon M. Draper. Obviously it's kind of a twist on Romeo and Juliet. Uh, Romeo is African American and Julio is Hispanic, so maybe it's Julio. Oh, okay. So I don't know, this one just sounded really cool and maybe it'll kind of like be a gateway into Shakespeare for some kids. This is another one where just like judging the book by its cover it looks really cool. Three Times Lucky by Sheila Turnage. And this one says, uh, most summer is looking good, but that's before the murder, the kidnapping, the car crash, and the hurricane. If ever there was a time for Mo to put her detective skills to work, this is it. Good thing Mo's always been lucky. I love mysteries. I have a lot of students that love mysteries, and so I think this will be a good one for them. Actually, this was one that wasn't a suggestion. I just remember reading this in probably like middle school, like 7th or 8th grade. It's called Thwonk by Joan Bauer, and I just remember really liking it. And as I was um, filling up my Amazon cart, this one just came to mind, and I was like, oh yeah, I gotta get that one. I can't remember everything about it, but it's about this girl that like somehow meets a Cupid, and she's like friends with him, and he can shoot people if he wants to for her. So I just remember really liking it, so I'm gonna put it on my shelf. He made it almost through the whole haul, but not quite. So I think he's going to need to participate in the rest of this. So anyway, the next book I have is Flora and Ulysses. And I think this will be a good kind of transition book to have in my library. Some of my students are a little lower readers and it kind of comforts them if there are a few pictures in a book. And this one has a couple pages that have pictures. It says um, it's the illuminated adventures um, and this one just sounds really cool. The girl is a natural born cynic and he is an unassuming squirrel. I'm running out of places to put all these books. <laughs> the next one is Ungifted by Gordon Corman and it's about this kid that like gets in trouble and instead of going where he's supposed to go like some new school he ends up at a school for the gifted and he has to try and fit in there so sounds kind of cool okay my husband took the baby so <laughs> i can finish there's still a couple more to go uh this one is called psb 11 by rita williams garcia a lot of people suggested books by this author so i grabbed this one um it sounds really interesting it's sort of like a historical fiction as well um because it's set during like the 70s and there's these sisters that um they spent the summer with their mother and the Black Panthers. They live in New York. I haven't read a whole lot of books with this setting, so this one sounded really cool to me. This is another sort of circusy one. This one's called The One and Only Ivan by Katherine Applegate. And it's about a, a baby elephant and a gorilla, but they're in like a shopping mall. Yeah, okay. So I, I don't know too much more about this one, but there's like this trend of like circusy books happening, and I like it. This looked like another good kind of transition book. This one's called The 14th Goldfish, Believe and the Impossible, and it's crossed out by Jennifer L. Holm. It's another shorter one, and it really doesn't have pictures. It just has, like, 
goldfish um, on the pages that start a new chapter. So again, for some reason that just like comforts some kids, so I think they'll like this one. This is another one that had a cool setting. Um, this is The Wednesday Wars by Gary D. Schmidt, and it's a kid who's in seventh grade during uh, the Vietnam War in 1967. So I wonder actually, I wanna like read this one and then the other one set in Saigon together, and maybe I could do some kind of like a book study with both of these. So one really good thing about all these suggestions is that it's it's hard for me to like keep up on all of the young adult literature and know like every single great YA book because that wasn't my focus when I became a teacher. I became a history teacher and then added English later. So I'm kind of getting my education on a lot of young adult literature from you guys and it's kind of cool to see some of these stories that I could like put together and um, compare and contrast. So maybe I can do some cool literature units now that I'm becoming more familiar with more of the YA stuff that's out there. Okay, we're down to the last two books. Uh, this one is Eleanor and Park, which has been suggested to me many times. I started reading it, I'm trying to read just a little bit of each of these books before I put them on my shelf, and this one is one I'm not going to put on my shelf because I have 6th graders and this has a lot of cussing in it, and so, I mean, that's not like a deal breaker necessarily if it has a few cuss words in it, but this one, it's, there's kind of a lot. But I'm loving this book, I can barely put it down. I started it last night and I'm on page... 189. I took it to Starbucks today with the baby and got a lot of reading done. So I'm loving it and I'll save it for, you know, maybe if I teach eighth grade again or I have high schoolers or something, it's more appropriate for that age level. Okay, and the last one, this looks so interesting. Someone suggested this more for my interests and I can see why. This is the um, Casquette Girls by um, Alice Arden, I think is how you say her name. And this sounds so good. After the storm of the century rips apart New Orleans, 16 year old Adele Lemoyne wants nothing more than her now silent city to return to normal. With a parish-wide curfew, a climbing murder rate, and mysterious new faces lurking in the abandoned French Quarter, normal needs a new definition. Caught in a hurricane of myths and monsters, Adele must untangle a web of magic that weaves back to her own ancestors. Who can she trust when everyone has a secret and keeping them can mean life or death, unless you're immortal? I don't know, this one just sounds so, so good. It's really long, so I think I'm gonna try and read this. I love stories about New Orleans, and this one just sounds way cool. So, um, I could do like another video about this, but maybe it's not necessary. Um, I just went to Vistaprint, and you know how you can get a bunch of address labels for pretty cheap? I just ordered a bunch of those, and they have like a little book in the corner, and they say, uh, Mrs. Forbes' book, like, please enjoy and then return. I think they just say that. And so um, I always stick those on my books. So I just put like one here and one here so that I know that they're mine. And then what I'm gonna do, since now I have all these really cool books that I want to make sure I keep track of, is I'm just creating a Google form that is like a library book checkout. Since all my students have their own Chromebooks, I'm thinking that's gonna be the easiest way to keep track of where all my books are. So I haven't tried this yet, but I went to a conference and there was a teacher there who suggested um, having a Google form. This stack of books right here makes me so happy. And seriously, thank you so much for your suggestions. These books are amazing. You guys have amazing taste and I'm so glad that I had some money to spend on some new books. I think this will just make my classroom just a more reader friendly place and already like I've read a couple of these books and so I just feel like I'm more in tune with um, young adult literature right now. And it's just so good. Like sometimes people just write stories at this level so they're more accessible. It doesn't mean that, you know, if you're an adult you can't read young adult literature. Sometimes it's so good. I'm actually hoping to apply for at least one more grant this year to get even more books. So if you have other ones that you know of that are really good, please leave those suggestions down below and maybe I can do another book haul. Thank you again to Foothill Credit Union. Have a great day and go read a book.